videos for the campaign, Make Halton City Thrive Again, Ron Sturgeon wants to bring all the businesses back to Halton City and to make it easier to start a business in Halton City. A fierce advocate for small businesses, Ron always says their struggle is real. Ron wrote a book on the topic, Keeping the Lights on Downtown in America's Small Cities, the critical role small businesses play in bringing back jobs and prosperity. Please request a free autographed copy if you live in Halton City. It's received over 25 star reviews on Amazon. The book gives many more details about the things we're going to discuss in these videos. You can learn more about Ron's efforts at his Facebook page, Make Halton City Thrive Again. These videos are to help voters so they can make an informed choice in the next election about who is going to lead and bring solutions for the city. Thanks for watching, and I encourage you to watch the other videos posted. And most importantly, make sure you vote in the next election as we strive to bring back prosperity to Altam City's declining areas and corridors in the central and southern parts of the city. We need pro-business candidates to serve on the City Council. If you're interested in helping or serving, reach out to Ron for more information. Now, Ron, the business community in Halton City has been uh, a proponent of reduced parking minimums. And uh, cities around the country have implemented uh, this policy and have met with success. Tell us if this is the direction that Halton City should go in and why. Well, I think it's a great first step for Halton City. First, it would differentiate them from North Richland Hills or some of the other surrounding cities. By the way, Mansfield already created a zone with form-based zonings and they reduced the parking minimums, and within three months they got four new developments, okay, in the older part of town. And this is for all cities, big cities, small cities. Now, when you first say it, reduced parking minimums, everybody says, oh my God, where is everybody going to park? And the reality is businesses that were built in the 60s had a different parking requirement than today. Today, many people use Uber, they use different forms of travel and so on and so on. Does it mean that on Christmas Day, the 620 parking spaces at the Target store may overrun? It might. It might very well. But do we need to keep 630 parking spaces for the other 364 days of the year? Other cities allow parts of that parking lot to be uh, redeveloped into a small restaurant or other small businesses and these small businesses i know for, I, I, just in the past few months i saw a daycare turn down because they needed seven spaces and they only had six and the city sent them away sent them away mm -hmm. okay and i saw a barber shop with the same thing didn't have enough parking sent them away and uh it's funny how when you do reduce the parking spaces, and I know this because we have 23 salons in Tarrant County, and on Saturday, I think you could have 10,000 parking spaces and you wouldn't have enough, okay? We meet the requirements in the cities, which is five per thousand in most cities, five per thousand square feet. But most of the week, the parking lots are empty. Literally, they're empty. And there have been a number of financial studies that show that development occurs a lot more speedily when you don't impose those restrictions on the new businesses. And, uh, and in the bigger lots, like that target that might be on a, on a main corridor, that, that land is not producing any tax revenue for the city. Right. It's not producing sales taxes and it's not producing ad valorem taxes. Right. So rethinking how much parking we need really does work. And, but you know what, don't listen to me. Just Google parking minimums redevelopment of cities and you'll find cities all over the United States including California which barred it at all of their public transit stations parking minimums and I want to point out that again we're not proposing we should build a new shopping center on the north side of town or a bunch of eateries and not have enough parking for them we can do this in the zones that need to be redeveloped in the older parts of zones we can target which parts of the city and I know it sounds scary. Most of the cities that have studied it and gone and looked at what other cities did 
just did away with the parking down there. They didn't reduce it. They just did away with it. Interesting. And by the way, it's easy to re reinstate if that's what you sure. need to do. They're still there. It's a whole lot easier to reinstate than it is to lose all the businesses that didn't come. And of course, you don't know what you don't know, so you lost them. So parking minimums are a good first step. Unfortunately, our, most of our, if not all of our council people live in the north side of the city, which is redeveloping and developing quite nicely. And surely they drive to the south and central parts, but do they, maybe they have their eyes closed when they drive through those parts of the city. They don't seem to recognize that this is a serious problem. And you know, from, of course cities are notoriously slow, but from the time we make a, decide there's a problem, then we have to make a plan. Then we have to codify the plan. Then we have to execute on the plan. It's easy to see that we need to get started on this if we're gonna make any progress. 